In the year 2018, according to the World Health Organization, nearly 10 million people died of cancer. When two patients have exactly the same cancer at the same stage, it can spread through the body with varying intensity. With one person, it leads to death after just a few months, while the other person survives for several more years. Why should this be? In the past, oncologists focused on the cancer cells and on the genetic mutations of those cells. But more important, or at least just as important, are the immune cells that surround the cancer. Jérôme Galland is a director of research at the prestigious Institut National de la Santé, or INSERM for short, in Paris. When he started working there in the early 2000s, Cancer researchers still assumed that only the cells of the tumour were responsible for how aggressively cancer proliferated through a patient's body. Galland, on the other hand, had completely different ideas. He believed that the patient's immune system was the key factor. The more effectively the immune cells, shown here in brown, fight the degenerated cancer cells and destroy them, the slower the growth of the tumour. There's an immunological monitoring system designed to prevent the spread of cancer. But if cancer has got a grip and the immune system is too weak, then it can't control the cancer any longer and it spreads further inside the organism. To prove his theory, the Frenchman embarked on an elaborate project. He wanted to re-measure tumour tissue samples from countless cancer patients to find out how many immune cells they contained. The idea, a large number of immune cells in the tumour tissue, meant the body was subjecting the cancer to an all-out attack, enabling the patient to live longer. With our trials, we wanted to analyse the complete microenvironment of the cancer. And we really did examine all the immune cells inside the tumour. Using a highly complex procedure, the researchers stained all the immune cells present in the tissue. This created microscopic images showing the immune cells in the tumour tissue as brown dots. With the help of the computer, these dots could now be counted and the researchers found from 1 to 8,000 immune cells per square millimeter. An elaborate procedure. And the scientists repeated it on more than 7,000 patients. The first study was published 10 years ago, so there was a very, very long period of research before we got these results. But Gallon and his team had not yet proven that the number of immune cells had any significance. That's why they asked the hospitals and the doctors who had given them the tissue samples to provide them with more information about the patients. They wanted to know whether patients whose immune systems had a larger number of cells fighting the cancer were actually living for longer. If so, that would be a major breakthrough for Gallon and his team. I still clearly remember that precise moment of discovery. I was at home, analysing the statistical findings, and suddenly I noticed that the response of the patient's immune system really did play a key role. The data made it quite clear. The higher the number of immune cells, the better the life expectancy, a correlation that Gallon decided to name the immunoscore. Cancer patients with a high score have a life expectancy of up to 15 years. Patients with a low score, in contrast, manage only two years. That opened my eyes to the importance of the immune response to cancer. We really celebrated after that. It's opened up a whole new era, the era of anti-cancer immunity which is now unfolding with immunotherapy.
The discovery caused quite a sensation in professional circles because for doctors it makes a lot of things easier. Thanks to this achievement, which I hope can be used on many types of cancer, we doctors can understand patients and their tumours far better, and as a result we know what kind of treatment they should be given. Does chemotherapy or radiation treatment have to begin right away? Or can doctors still wait, because the immune system is successfully fighting the cancer? Doctors can now make decisions like these far more accurately, thanks to the immunoscore. In 2005, Gallant filed a patent application for the method. In 2014, he founded the company Halio DX, which went on to market the approach worldwide. The immunoscore-related market has been estimated at over 1 billion euros per year. And today, the method is already in use in 19 countries. Why does cancer proliferate so aggressively in one patient while growing far more slowly and sometimes even disappearing in another? Gallon and his team have indeed found an answer to that mystery. It's an invention that will provide many cancer patients with better treatment in the future, in particular through novel immunotherapy to reactivate their immune systems.